Catching up with head coach Derek King, recapping the 2021 season. And I'm going to go ahead and toss it right on in. Patrick Williams, your hand is up. Your line is active. Yes, uh, uh, Coach, uh, I guess a uh, two-part question to start. Uh, do you feel like you accomplished the goals you wanted to this season? And the second part to that is, what might you take forward from this season that will be useful down the road? Well, you, you know, you always, as a coach, you, you always think you're, you know, you have your goals like you asked. Um, obviously, uh, the goal for us as a development staff is to make sure these kids uh, improve. And by the end of the year, they should be uh, better than what they were at the start of the year. So uh, have I accomplished that? Have we accomplished that? I agree. I think we have. This, these guys came together at the end of the year. And I think the growing pains to start. They got through that growing pains and then we became a team and we started playing some hockey. Um, what was the other part of your question? Sorry. Um, just uh, what might you take forward uh, oh, for this yeah. season, either tactics or just philosophies? Oh, no, yeah. yeah. You know, I think, I think everybody learned from this year, just based on being at, let's call it the COVID-19 uh, season just how to manage 30 plus hockey players in a tight confined uh, area, you know, uh, dealing with uh, testing every day, uh, lineup change every day, uh, the big clubs taxi. So I think that the big thing I took from this was just learning to managing all that, which is going to make me better in the upcoming season. Because I mean, if we, we deal with whatever they give us, but, I'm hoping we don't have 30 something players here next year. We have, you know, a, a good number to work with. So it'd be a lot easier to manage, but um, yeah, I, I would say just managing everything based on the type of year it was with this COVID. Sam Knox, your hand is up. Your line is active. <clears throat> hey coach. So, you know, in a year of first for many, um, you know, what did, what did you learn about yourself as a coach and, and then, you know, can you speak to how proud you are of the guys for kind of just rolling with the punches, a couple of COVID pauses from other teams and stuff like that? Uh, just what I learned for myself was just the patience. I think I'm, I had a lot better patience uh, with these players. Uh, coming into it, I didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, there's been cases over the years when I took over just kind of like, you know, you're, you're playing to develop, but we had teams that we, you know, you want to win too. So you get a little frustrated and, and uh, sometimes you kind of lose your uh, focus on what you're doing. And, and um, I think I got better at focusing on what I know we have to do. Uh, I can't worry so much about the wins uh, and losses and more than just let's concentrate on making these players better. And I think if we do that, and the players like next year coming into this, a lot of these guys coming back, they, they've already kind of got a taste of the league. They've got the growing pains out of the way. So the start should be better. And then those wins will come a lot more easier. All right. Thanks, Coach. Jay Taft, your line is active. Hi, hey, Coach. Um, in this, just looking back on this sprint of a season there, is there a couple of names that just, are are standing out in your mind when you and the coaches sit down and look back at the season you start off with these two or three names of just guys that jumped out yeah i mean you know the the, the one kid that stepped out uh, jumped out at me on the point was uh well two i would say uh, phillips and uh regula uh, you know you don't know what you're getting i've watched these players uh, just by watching games online uh, in the OHL, just because I'm watching my kid play and they're playing against these guys. And um, you always wonder when they come in here, are they, you know, I always say you got to get the junior out of these kids or the college out of these kids before they start figuring out this game because it's, it's a pretty good game at this level, never mind the NHL. So I'm, I'm wondering if they can bring that type, the way they played in the o, OHL or junior into this league and they did. Uh, and I was surprised at that because usually, like I said, it's okay, the growing pains, you got to get the, the, these players to, you know, buy into playing the game 
a little different than what they're used to. And then, uh, you know, Barrett, I, you know, prospect camps with this kid, um, great personality. He, if he works on his couple of the first two strides, he'll play in the NHL because he, he's, he's so smart. He's a good player and he plays, he plays every shift like it's his last, which I was just really happy for him, but it was just nice to see a kid like that, uh, the kind of jam he has and the way he plays the game. And then Buzz Decker, you know, I knew Buzzy just by watching because he played with my kid. And, you know, same thing, you know, he works hard. He was a good junior player, but is he going to bring that same intensity when he gets here? And uh, he did. He was outstanding for us. It was hard to find any reason to take this kid out of the lineup. Uh, I didn't use him on D, but we had him at practice at D many times. Uh, he was power play. He could play PK, uh, play any position you want, center. And I just think he did a fabulous job. And there's some more forwards here uh, that still need some work, but uh, we'll get there. And uh, But those four guys right there really, really stood out for me. Is Buzz Decker one of those you think is on the brink or is is ready at least for a look at the next level? Um, I think that for him to get a look at the next level, for him, people to start looking at, he's going to have to come in here and have the same type of year he's got with her. Um, he's going to have to have a good summer, which I told him to make sure he's gets stronger. Um, he's not, you know, your six two, six three hockey player that can move, uh, but he's a strong kid. Uh, he's a good pro. So um, the only thing I told him was, you turn that AHL deal into an NHL deal as soon as you can. Uh, that's going to be up to him. Thanks, sir. Yep. Brandon Kane, your line is active. Hey, Derek, wanted to get your thoughts on the progression and development this year for uh, Alti Barmakian and Michael Tepley. Yeah, um, you know, I probably could have thrown an Alti in there too in that mix of guys up front. Um, you know, he's a character. I thought he improved uh, extremely from the first, you know, five to 10 games to where he ended. Um, you know, I'm looking for big things from him next year. Um, he's going to be, you know, have to have a good summer of training. But when he comes in, he's got to um, give himself a fair chance of being one of our top six guys and, and be steady at that position. Um, I think he's got the skill to do it. Um, and he definitely plays with a little edge. <laughs> he drives other teams crazy. So that's, that's going to be his niche. Uh, Tepley you know slow start but that's you know again I, i'm using the growing pains but that's that's a, a thing where you know even though he was away from home this is a whole different demon a whole different atmosphere um language wise uh getting used to being um doing things on your own really you know opening up a bank account getting a driver's license doing all those little things he's never really had to do uh, your billets usually do a lot of it and uh, the teams you usually go, especially if you're like an import like that, a lot of things are done for you. So I think he made some huge strides. So at the end of the year, he was looked like he was comfortable with his surroundings and he was starting to play the type of hockey that uh, we knew he could play. So I'm looking for a big thing, big summer from him and then some good things from him next year. Was there anything specifically on the ice that you saw those two? Improve well, just yeah I mean kind of two different players um Tepley's got a lot of upside on his skill uh the big thing uh I think he improved in he was starting to work without the puck um and same with Alti um you know has some skill obviously but the big thing with him too was uh I think uh conditioning wise I think he was starting to come around where he was used to the pace and everything but the big thing is these guys have to learn to play when they don't have the puck. Um, but when they have the puck, they can play. But let's go get that puck back as quick as we can, and then you have it more. So uh, their skill will definitely shine. So um, things we – and it's not just those two also, also. I think as a whole team, we started working without the puck a lot better, and that's why we have better success. 
Mario, uh, see your hand is up. Your line is active, sir. Hey, coach. Um, kind of <clears throat> bouncing off of that, uh, you know, speaking about the you know the players getting used to um, you know living life away from you know their their regular lives. This season was pretty uh, unusual. And what was you know what are some things that you know away from the game of hockey you maybe talked about with some of the players and and just kind of getting getting through this season being so, being so odd. And, um, you know, a lot of them being in their first years, uh, as, as pros. Yeah. Well, you know, your first year pro you're in a bubble, you know, you don't get the, the atmosphere of the fans. You don't get, uh, you know, just the team bonding when you go on a week road trip and you go out after a night, and go for dinner with your teammates and celebrate, maybe you got to win, you feel good about your team and you don't get all that. You know, we never saw any of that. We're in and out of uh, buildings. You're on the bus. Uh, you're at home staring at cardboard cutouts, which I didn't mind because they weren't yelling at me to wake these guys up or anything like that. But they just don't get that, you know, first year kind of, this is great. You walk, come through the tunnel, you get to start the game. The crowd's cheering. The national anthems sounds good. You just miss out on all those little things. Uh, the bonding usually get when you do like I said travel or even at home when you can maybe have a team get together or do some team bonding and do pick whatever it is we do bowling paintball just to have these guys and get them out like they were really these guys did a great job of sticking to the protocol that we asked them to do and that's why we never had any cases touch wood you know and but next year hopefully everything's cleared up and we're back to normal where you know, we do do those two week road trips where we're, we're traveling on bus, we're flying, we're in the airports, guys are together are helping each other out, get through everything. So um, keep our fingers crossed that we are back to normal come the start of the year. And uh, these guys will get a full, full experience of what pro hockey is all about. Scott Lever, your hand is up. Your line is active. Hey, Coach. Um, uh, Mark Bernard told us just a few minutes ago you and your assistants will be back next season. I assume that's not news to you, but how, how long ago did you learn that you will be retained? And uh, how does it make you feel to know the organization likes the job you're doing? Well, it feels great. Um, I kind of knew probably over a week ago um, they had talked to us about it and uh, we knew we were safe and um but that can change. I haven't signed anything yet. So I got to check my emails, make sure that contract's in the mail. But <laughs> um, no, it's, we're happy. I mean, listen, I, you know, I've been around the game. I've been in different organizations. I've worked for different owner at different levels, whether playing or coaching. And the Blackhawks are a class act. They do everything right. Um, there's nothing they won't give us to, tool wise or, uh, budget wise to make these players better and it's shown uh, look at the guys we had um, I mean they've had guys over before I even got here that made steps but for us uh, since we've been here look at the guys that are playing in the uh, up with the big club already and that's just you know they're giving us the tools to do that uh, if we don't have the tools to do it we can't do our job the right way and uh, you know hats off to them but yeah it's always feels good when you get a pat in the back and they reward you by extending your contracts and uh, that they feel that we're doing the right thing by these kids. Are you uh, at Liberty or comfortable telling us how many years they're offering you? Um, uh, yeah, I guess I can tell. They're offering us all uh, extensions at uh, three years. And um, so, you know, I, they, they do it right that way because they keep everybody on the same page. There's not like the head coach has a three-year deal, the assistant has one year and see how he does. Or they keep everything together. Uh, and I, I believe our staff is, um, I have a lot of confidence in them, the way we do things here. And I, I feel we're probably one of the better staffs in, in, in the league. Hey, they're all good, good staffs, but I got to boost our guys because they do an excellent job and they help me out huge. One last question from me. Uh, uh, Brian Campbell and Kendall Coyne, I mean, your thoughts on the contributions they made and uh, how much they're going to help this organization. Well, they're obviously Stoopy, Brian, like, you know, just out of the game, what a career this kid's had and 
um, what he brings to, to the table for the whole team, never mind just the defense. Kendall's been a nice ass asset. Um, our whole uh, development staff, Kevin Delaney, with the improvement these guys have gotten from him with our skating and uh, a lot of the other skills he does. Uh, this guy's here every day. Um, you know, Mark Eaton, uh, Eric Condra uh, coming here and helping out too. It's It's been great. I mean, but this is why um, the Hawks do everything right. Um, we got to take advantage of our development staff. This is why these guys are here. And I love when they're here and, and I let them have free reigns, work with these kids, uh, talk to these kids, uh, get to know them. And uh, I thought this year was perfect year to do it. And I thought uh, outstanding job these guys did. Thank you. And then final question for Derek, Brandon Kane <clears throat> on is active. Derek, I want to touch on a few more guys here. Um, what are your thoughts on Josiah Slavin, Michael Crudel, and then Cal Morris this year and what they need to do this summer to take that next step in their game? Well, like anything, right? They all got to have a good summer of training, some off ice, put a little meat on, some muscle. Um, but, they, I mean, they all came in and did their job. Uh, again, uh, Slavs, watching video of him and the pre scouts. The scouting department sent us, you know, again, the, the question is, can he do what he did in college? Can he do it at this level? And I felt he did. Um, just got to get bigger, stronger, faster. And uh, Kale coming in, stopping pucks for us. Who knows if he would even have got game if it wasn't for, you know, the situations, how it occurred. Like we weren't really thinking of oh, how many games is this kid going to play? It was more for development and came in you know, did a great job, like showed that he could play at this level. So, and Crute's so young. I mean, he's, I think he's an 02 birth year. He's 18 years old. He's, I mean, he should be still living at home playing junior hockey, but um, I thought uh, Anders did a great job with the kid. Um, he learned a lot, but um, again, so young, he's got, he's raw. I'm looking forward to, uh, seeing what he does or how he comes into camp next year and uh, how, what kind of steps he'll make.